We've already been using the color property, but let's dive a little bit deeper into it. The color property in CSS is used to set the color of text, the background of a web page or element, and also to set the color of borders. We can use a number of methods to assign the color value, and it is possible to even use an alpha channel, which is a transparency value. The four property values in relationship to color are the color name, these are keyword names, think the Crayola cram box, things like red, green, blue, yellow, and there's even more sophisticated names like orange yellow or lime green. Next we have hexadecimal values. These represent the value of a color in hexadecimal format. Hexadecimal format always starts with the hash or number sign and the values will range from a series of numbers and letters. Then we have RGB or RGBA. This is red, green, blue, and the A stands for alpha. The color is assigned to the text or element by using the range of these values. These values range from 0 to 255. And then we have HSL or HSLA. HSL stands for hue, saturation, and lightness, and the A, of course, is for alpha. The range of hue will be from 0 to 360 degrees. Think the colors on the color wheel. Saturation means the gray effect it ranges from. This goes from 0 to 100%. And lightness means the effect of light, which ranges from 0 to 100%. Let me show you how these work on a web page. Here's the web page that we're going to be working on for this example. Once again, I have a section tag, I have some text, and then I have a list, and each of my list items has a class assigned to it. I'm already using some CSS to style these list items with specific colors. We'll look at that in just a minute. I also have an area down at the bottom of my page that has an H2 and a paragraph followed by three span elements. The span elements have two classes assigned to them. Remember that we can use more than one class name and we separate multiple class names by a space. So all of the span items share a class of box, as well as their own unique class name that is B1, B2, and B3. Let me show you what my CSS looks like so far. Here is the CSS. I have some basic styles that just format the page in a specific way, and then I've added these class styles that are targeting the various list items, and I'm using the color name value to assign color to these elements. Now as I mentioned before, when you use color name, you do have a wide range of colors that you can choose from, but you don't have granular control over the shade of that color. It's like getting a box of crayons and just using the colors that are inside that crayon box. So if we want to have more fine-tuned control over the shades of these colors, we need to use one of the other methods. Let's look at the hexadecimal values first. I've already installed a package in Atom, which allows me to access a color picker. This will make it easier for us to pick the colors right inside of Atom. If you missed that, I would recommend that you go back and watch the video that I already made about installing packages in Atom. I'll leave a link in the video description. Because I have the color picker package installed, I can use the keyboard shortcut and on the Mac, that would be Command-Shift-C. On the PC, it would be Control-Alt-C. And when I go ahead and click somewhere on my CSS page and click the keyboard shortcut, it's going to open up the color picker. The color picker inside of Atom is separated into a various array of colors. So right now, it's showing me the RGB values for this particular color. If I switch to the hex tab, it'll show me the exact same color, but it will show me the hex values. And here's my HSL values. So we'll start off working with hex. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into the red area. And I can control the hue of red by moving around the little color pointer in this area. Once I find a value that I want, I can simply click and it will assign that value. Now because I already used the keyword, I need to make sure that I delete the keyword. If we now save our page and refresh, you'll see that the red shade has now changed to this specific shade of red. Let's do this one more time on the yellow color. 
So I'm going to delete the keyword of yellow. I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut to open the color picker. I'll use this little slider to get into the color range that I want. And then I can move the little circle so I can pick the exact hue for that particular color. Once again, I want to use a hex value. So I'm going to switch to hex. And if I want to pick this color, I'll simply click on it and it will assign the color into my file. If we save our CSS and come back and refresh, you can see that now that yellow color is displaying. Let's go ahead and talk about the RGB values. I'll get rid of this blue keyword. I'm going to open up the color picker. I'll get into the blue range. And then once I find the blue that I want, I'm already in the RGB area. I can just go ahead and hit return. In order to use an RGB value, you will put RGB, open parentheses, and then the actual hues for red, green, and blue are going to be separated by commas. Don't forget, you'll need to close the parentheses. So if you're not using the color picker from Adam and you already know what the colors are, or you're using some other application to get the RGB values, you'll just need to manually plug in these values. I'll do the same thing here on green. But when I pick the green shade that I want to use, I'm going to go ahead and not only pick the actual color, but if I use this slider right here, I can control the alpha or transparency of that color. Now, because this particular element is not sitting on top of anything where we'll actually be able to see transparency, we will just see a lighter version of this green. But once you pick the value and you click, it'll assign that color. You'll notice the difference when you're using an RGBA color, you pass in four values. Once again, the first value is red, green, blue, and then the fourth value is going to be the amount of alpha. So if I wanted a 75% alpha, I would just put 0.75. You don't really need the zero here, so that is optional. You could just display it like this and it would work just fine. If we save our page, and refresh in the browser, you're going to see that it displays as a green. It's slightly lighter than the hue that we picked, and that's because we're applying a little bit of alpha to it. I'll come to my orange shade and I'll open up the color picker. And this time I'm going to use the HSL. HSL stands for hue, saturation, and lightness. So once again, you can go ahead and pick any hue of that particular color. And once you have established it, it will automatically tell you what the hue, saturation, and lightness values are going to be. If you want to use this color, you simply hit return. The hue in this case is 26. This is a value on the color wheel. The saturation is 74% and the lightness is 48%. Just like with RGB, when we use HSL, we have the option of also adding in alpha. So once we pick the hue that we want, we can go ahead and add the additional value of alpha. If we're happy with that, we'll click OK. And this is very similar to how we would define an RGBA value. We define the hue, the saturation, the lightness, and then the alpha. Now it is worth noting that for my list item that has the class of white, I needed to define a background color so we could see the text. Since my background is white, I would not be able to see the text on a white background. Since black is the default color, I did not define any sort of color value for that because the web browser is displaying all of my text in black as it is. Now let's go ahead and let's make some styles on these span items. So I've already talked about the class names that I have. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a selector for dot box and I'm going to assign width and height to these particular items. We'll go ahead and we'll add a border and I'll just make the border a mid-tone gray. And if we save and refresh in the browser, you'll see that the width and height are not being respected on my span elements. The reason why is because span, remember, is an inline element, not a block level element. So in order for the inline elements to accept things like width and height, we would need to change their display. We'll talk more in detail about display, 
but for right now I'm just going to assign a display value of inline block which is going to make these items behave somewhat like an inline element and somewhat like a block element. As I mentioned, we will go into this in more depth in a future lesson. Now I'll save my page and if we refresh, we can see the three boxes. So now that we have these on here, let's go ahead and let's assign a background color to each of these boxes. I will use my unique class names of .b1, .b2, and .b3. And we're just going to go ahead and specify a background color. I'll open up my color picker and I'll choose a shade and we're going to go ahead and use RGB. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the other two span elements, but we're going to add varying degrees of alpha and we're going to alter the hue slightly. So I'll just copy this rule. We'll change the selector to B2. I'm going to change the color value to RGBA and I do want to add a little bit of alpha so I'm going to put comma and I'll put 0.7 so we have 70% alpha. In addition I'm going to reduce down the amount of red. This will in essence create a new shade. This will be a slightly different shade of purple. It has a little bit more blue in it. Let's do that one more time on the third box. Once again I'll target the B3 element I'm going to use RGBA. We will set the alpha to 30%. I'm going to reduce the red color down to about 10. Now, if we save our page and we refresh in the browser, you can see that the boxes look like they're distinctly different colors. And they are, they have different amounts of red assigned to them. Even if these were all using the exact same amount of red, you'll see how the colors are going to appear different. That's because the various elements have different degrees of alpha. Let's set these back to the color values I had before. And in order for you to see this, I'm going to overlap these boxes. We can create an overlap by using a negative margin. So I'm gonna change my margin to about negative 30 pixels. If we save our page now and we refresh in the browser, you can see that the boxes overlap. Now the areas where they overlap, it actually looks like it's creating a new color. And in essence, it is. It's mixing the color from B1 with the color from B2. And because the B2 color has some transparency on it, we actually see through and we can see what happens when we blend this shade with the underlying shade. The same thing is happening here with our B3 element, it is mixing in this area with the color from B2. And we can actually see through that particular element since it has partial transparency. As you can see, this allows you to have a lot of control over your colors and you'll be able to create some really interesting effects. We will be working more with this throughout the course but in this lesson, I did want to introduce you to the various color values and show you how you can really dial in not only the color, but also the amount of transparency very easily using CSS. You probably won't use the alpha transparency very often on text, but you will see it come into play when we're dealing with other elements. I did want to show you this so that you understand how you can use the various color property values and the nuances that go along with them.